Welcome to part six of this Davon Data tutorial series, a Python crash course. The topic of this video is Python dictionaries. Python dictionaries are another fundamental data structure. Like lists, you often use dictionaries when writing Python code for analytics and data science. Therefore, learning Python dictionaries is a necessary step in your journey. As always, please follow along with this video by typing the code that I type. Don't hesitate to pause or rewind the video if needed because you most definitely learn Python by writing Python. Once again, consider a running example of the My Orders data table from the perspective of how you would access individual columns. So one way to think about this is from the perspective of spreadsheet software, something like Microsoft Excel. It is very common to see spreadsheet code, often called formulas, look like this, where you have the container, the table, the object, and then some sort of attribute, some sort of accessor. So in this case, what we're doing here is we're saying, look, I want to access the My Orders table and specifically the order amount column. Now, conceptually, this idea can be mapped to Python dictionaries. This is a data structure or a way to organize your data in Python that has this characteristic of saying, look, I have my collection of data here, the dictionary, and then I want to access some aspect of the data. This is what's known as a key with a dictionary in Python. So let's see how this works in code. As you can see, I'm in the data structures Jupyter Notebook that I created in the last lesson. If you're creating a new Jupyter Notebook completely from scratch and you don't know how to do that, be sure to check out part four of the series where I talk about how to do that in detail. Okay, so I'm in my Jupyter Notebook and I'm gonna go ahead and continue here with coverage of dictionaries. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch this cell over to Markdown, hashtag, hashtag, dictionaries, control enter, and there I go. Now I've got my new section for dictionaries. Now, as I discussed in slides, we can think of a dictionary as being a data structure to represent a collection of data. And what we saw was a table, and we can certainly represent an entire table of data as a dictionary, and we will do that here shortly. But let's crawl before we walk and walk before we run. So what we can also think of as a collection of data is an individual order in the My Orders table. So let's create a dictionary that represents a single row in that table. So here's my comment. And I'm just going to call the object an order. And I'm going to assign to it a dictionary object. Now how we tell Python we would like to create a dictionary object is we use curly braces. So if I do a left curly brace, notice how Jupyter throws the right one in for me for free because this is a very common thing to do. Now this is the way I like to write my dictionaries. It's not necessarily the best way or the only way, but I like this particular style. Okay, so I'm hitting enter key and I've got a new line here. And what I need to do is specify a key because a dictionary is a key value pair. So I have a key and then I have some data associated with that key. I'm gonna go ahead and use the string order number for my key, because this represents that column in the table that we saw in the slides. Now, how I assign data to this key is I use the colon, and then anything after the colon gets associated with the key. So I'm gonna just associate it with uh, 44321, which was the order number from the first row in the My Orders table. Now, I can add more things to this dictionary. I could stop here, but I wanna add more stuff, because remember, I'm trying to simulate an entire row from that table. And now I'll add another key, which is called product, which is also a string, colon, and my value is a, a string here of small widgets. And then I can add another one real quick, my quantity. The value is three, whoops, need my comma here. And then lastly, order amount, and that was 9.99. This is a legit dictionary. Now if I run this, nothing happens because I create the object and there's no output. So of course what I can do here is do some fun things like I'll go ahead and print the type of an order and then I can just print an order just so we can see what's going on here. Okay, so there's a couple of interesting things going on here. First up, the type of object that an order is right now in my notebook is of class dict. Dict is the blueprint. It is the class that allows you to construct new dictionaries. Often you don't see this used in practice, but it's still there behind the scenes. And then here you can see the actual printout of the order object. 
And what it looks like suspiciously is like the code. <laughs> All on one line to be sure, but it's pretty much the same thing as I have written up here. Okay, now what's cool is when you have a dictionary, you can use these keys to access data. That's kind of the whole point. So access the dictionary by key. So for example, I can ask the an order object via these square brackets for the product data. Now notice this, notice that in the last lesson, we saw how using square brackets are used to create list objects. And of course that's absolutely true. Here we're using square brackets in a different context. So they're interpreted differently by Python. In this case, it's saying he's using square brackets on a dictionary. Ah, he doesn't want to make a list. He wants to access the dictionary. And what happens is the dictionary goes in and says, is there a key named product? Yes, there is. I'll return Dave back the data associated with that key, which is the string small widgets. Now, one of the things that's very common that you see in practice when you write your code and run your code is that sometimes for whatever reason, there's a key that isn't there in the dictionary that you expect to be there. So let's see what happens when that case arises. So when there is no key, and order, square bracket, tax amount. Now, if I run this, I get an error. I get an exception back of type key error, which makes total sense. It's basically saying, Dave, um, there is no tax amount. There is no key named tax amount. Now, a good way to write your code with dictionaries when you're not necessarily sure if the key will be there is to use a different method, a different way to get at the data where it says, hey, dictionary, I want to access this key, but if it's not there for whatever reason, don't throw a key error. Instead, give me back a default value that I tell you. And we can do that by using what's known as the get method. So try and see if a key exists using a default otherwise. And order dot, this is the notation that we use in Python to say I have an object and I would like to invoke a method, a behavior on it. And like I said, it's called get. And we need parentheses when we're doing methods here. Tax amount. And if it's not present, return back the value NA. Now I can put anything here. I could put foo, I could put bar, I could put 27 but let's use NNA, which stands for not available. Okay, boom. And that works. So this is a good way to do some defensive programming around your dictionaries, just in case you're not sure if they're going to contain the keys that you expect. Okay, moving on. Now we're ready to actually see how we can represent the entire my orders data table in a dictionary. Now, rather than watch me try and hack out this code, I'm just gonna copy and paste it in. Be sure to pause the video so that you get a chance to type in the code before moving on with the video. So here's our code for simulating the entire my orders table as a dictionary. Now this is not the only way you can do it, but it's sufficient for our purposes for this video. So notice what I've got. I've got all the same keys, order number, product, quantity, order amount. And notice what I've got over here are lists. And something really interesting has been happening all along in this video. I've been mixing matching object types inside of dictionaries ints and floats and strings, and now you can see that I've added lists to the mix. Just like lists, dictionaries can store basically any type of object. This is one very simple representation, but they can get a lot more complicated than this. So you can see here that I have all three order numbers for each row, all three products, one for each row, so on and so forth in the data. And if I run this, I get back a relatively complicated output, which looks essentially like the code cell. Now what's cool, of course, is that I, when I have this representation, I can grab the data by key. But let's say, for example, I don't necessarily know what the keys are in my dictionary. So I can actually ask the dictionary to give me back all of the keys. Get the dictionary keys. My orders, keys. And this is a method. This is a function, a behavior. And when we run this, what we get back is a dict underscore keys object. You can see that right here, dict underscore keys, which is a specialized object that represents exactly what the data is, which is the keys of a dictionary. Notice inside of here though, we have a list. And typically that's what you end up wanting. I mean, there's nothing wrong with the dict keys object, don't get me wrong, 
But often what you want is a list instead. You just want the list of the keys. So we can do that. And notice what I'm doing here. Let me just type it all out and then I'll explain it. Notice I had to make sure I had the right number of parentheses. <laughs> okay, everything's cool now. So what I'm doing here is I'm saying, hey, Python, go to the my underscore orders object and invoke the keys method on it. And Python says, yep, got an object called that. It's a dictionary. Yep, it's got a keys method. Cool. And what gets returned back, as we know from the previous cell, is a dict underscore keys object. And then what I do is I feed that into the list class. And the list class allows me to instantiate a new list. Effectively, what I'm doing here is I'm transforming or what is known as casting the dict underscore keys object into a list. And because underneath the covers, Python knows how to do that, it works just fine. And what I get back is a awesome list, which I can work with. And typically that's what you really, really want. Now, of course, I can do cool things like my order keys, I can create an object and then store this information just fine. So this is really, really cool. This is actually something you do quite often with dictionaries in your code, but we're not done. We can also do this with the values as well. So get dictionary values. My orders dot values. Got a method here, a behavior. I invoke that and look what I get back. Not surprisingly, what I get back is a dict underscore values object. I just love it when everything makes intuitive sense, right? If I got a dict keys object, it makes sense that I'd have a dict values object as well. There you go. And what we can see here is a more complicated data structure, which is a list of lists. So I got my outer list here and then inner lists. So not surprisingly, we often don't want to work with a dict values object. We often just want to work with a list object. So we can go ahead and get the dictionary values as a list. And we're going to call this my orders, my order values. And we're going to instantiate a list from my orders dot values. And then of course I can print. Easy there, Dave. There we go. Boom. And I have a, <laughs> a bug because this should be my orders. And what you can see here is I get back a list of lists, which is a ideal data structure to work with in many, many scenarios. Okay, so there you have it. Like with the previous video, this is a just a quick introduction to dictionaries. Dictionaries are used all the time in Python. As you get more experience writing Python code, you'll learn more and more about dictionaries. But this is more than enough to get started with using Python for analytics and data science. So don't lose your work. So be sure to click the save button here. And then as I've demonstrated in video four, you want to make sure that you shut down this particular notebook. You want to shut down the Jupyter Notebook server as well to make sure that you free up all the resources on your computer when you're done. When you're ready to start learning how to do some analytics and data science with Python, be sure to check out my free crash courses and you can see them listed here. At the time of this recording, I have four of them. They're completely free. They're self-paced. They also include PDFs of all the slides, Jupyter notebooks of all the code and any data files. And you can see here, I have one on logistic regression, two on decision trees. These should really be watched together because they give you enough information to actually build useful decision tree machine learning models. And then lastly, I have one on cluster analysis. So when you're ready, you can go ahead and register and then watch whenever you have time in your schedule. Okay, there you have it. Hopefully you're liking the video series. If you are, please give the video a like. If you wanna get updates as new videos in the series are released, be sure to subscribe to the channel. And lastly, if you know somebody, friends or family or colleagues that might be interested in learning Python and you like what you see, please recommend this particular crash course. Okay, next up, we're gonna be covering Python tuples and sets. That'll conclude our coverage of data structures that you need as part of a crash course for Python in analytics and data science. Until next time, please stay healthy and happy data sleuthing.